One of the reasons I am here today is that for the past 25 years, I have been one of the volunteers that has helped to create a renaissance in downtown Williamsport, and we did it through the arts. I love telling this story, and I wanted to share it. Um, I want to talk about what happened to our little towns. I'll make that short, because we all know that story. Uh, what we did to make a difference, and what I think that means to the 21st century. Um, at the end of the 20th century, it's so, it's so hard to be so old to talk about going back and forth in centuries, uh, but at the end of the 20th century, America and our little towns had lost a lot of our traditional forms of community. Uh, changes in family structure, uh, TV, uh, computers, the internet, and moving to the suburbs had eroded a lot of our traditional ways of being communities. Uh, Moving to the suburbs was one of the things that was really, really hard on our little towns. Um, as we moved to the suburbs, we no longer invested in the neighborhoods of our little towns or the schools. And then in the 70s, when the stores from our little towns went to the malls, little towns like Williamsport were left with empty storefronts and struggling neighborhoods. Um, in the 90s, the early 90s, I was one of the citizens of Williamsport that felt like our city was getting worse and worse, and I felt like we might lose our city. Now, myself and, and other people loved living in a little city. We liked having a downtown that was our civic center. We liked having neighborhoods that had sidewalks. Sidewalks are just such a wonderful thing. And um, so we started to talk, we started to talk and we started to meet. And um, we realized that we wanted to save the city. So I'm, I'm going to talk about three different things. One is, uh, you know, what happened to our little towns. The second thing is, what did we do? Um, so how do we save the city? What do we do? We were lucky in that we found out about a program called the Main Street Program, which is a program that is designed to save the little towns of America because that is where most of the story of America happened. So we created a Main Street Program. Now Main Street Program is, um, they call it a four-point program. They want you to do four things. They want you to do organization, they want you to do design, economic restructuring, and promotion. So for organization, we created a Main Street Committee. And then that committee tried to connect and to work with all the other organizations that were invested in the downtown. Uh, for design, we, uh, using Main Street principles, we developed design guidelines. And because there were several people on our committee that were artists, we actually would go to the storefronts and help the, the business owners to pick colors for the buildings and, and how to get awnings and how to do the signage so that we could make the downtown look good. Economic restructuring. What economic restructuring means is that the stores have gone to the mall. What do we do now? Main Street says, catalog your assets. We said, OK, we'll catalog our assets. Uh, somehow, we managed to think about making a map. If you look at a map of downtown Williamsport, you'll realize we have a college, a downtown, a, a, a fairly intact old downtown, uh, a historic a Victorian historic district, and another college. We basically had a, a, a cultural district. Now. Um, cataloging our assets, we were thinking, oh, at that point in time, we had four theaters in our downtown. Uh, Penn College had just revamped the, uh, the Community Arts Center. The Community Theater League was moving into the Trade and Transit Center. Our Arts Council, like Homing Arts, had at least 20 organizations that were music organizations. We had our Williamsport Area School District had an award-winning program. We had a, a Williamsport Symphony Orchestra, and our little clubs and bars, any given week here, there's more music here than sometimes I can find in a big city. Okay, so th th those are a lot of cultural assets. The next thing we started to look at was our little family restaurants like Herdy Cows, DeSalvo's, and Franco's. They were starting a, a food scene. Penn College developed a culinary arts program. The, food scene and the culinary arts were now driving the, uh, the development of the farmer's market, the buy fresh, buy local, and the, the groovy 
arty little coffee shops. On Main Street, um, as I said, there were several artists on our committee. They knew that there was even more art. We really didn't have much of a platform for the visual arts. And so we sat there and we looked at each other and we said, we think we've got the goods. So Williamsport is looking a little sad at this moment in time. So how do we convince people? Oh, I forgot to tell you. One of the things that we had found through our work was a book called The 100 Best Little Art Towns in America. It turned out that this was a tourism guide because people from the big cities wanted to come to little towns, probably wanting to go back to the 50s, you know, when we all felt safer, but they wanted to come to little towns and be part of the art and the food and all that. So using that as our guide, we felt, you know, maybe we can pull this off. Maybe we could become one of the 100 best little art towns in America. The fourth point of the Main Street program is promotion. Now, basically, what we were going for was an art town brand. So we said, what we need is a promotion that celebrates the arts. Uh, and across America, people had been doing this. I wish I could say that we thought of everything, but we did steal a lot of ideas. That book, The 100 Best Little Art Town, was, it was like our Bible. So across America, people were taking one day of the month and celebrating the arts. So we decided we would do a first Friday. So we got a grant from the uh, Lycoming Arts, and we, uh, it was the um, June 2001, the first Friday of June, the weather, thank heavens, was beautiful. We took the arts to the street. We, I got bands, we invited the artists to come downtown, we invited the artisans to come, we invited everybody to show and sell. We put art in all the businesses and the, and the coffee shops. We opened four student galleries, yeah, four student galleries. Uh, let me see what else we did. Oh, our school systems had wonderful art programs, and they shared, I, both of our colleges and, and our public schools, they shared their art programs with First Friday. They came downtown and were part of it, too. Uh, let me think where I am. I get a little lost sometimes. Um, so at this point, oh, I know what happened at this point. At this point, we have a newspaper called the Sun Gazette. The Sun Gazette had really always been you know, had always covered the arts. But when they saw that something was happening, they became so generous to us and gave us so much coverage. Now, of course, we wrote all the press releases, so there was that. But, um, and, and it, even their coverage was so good that every now and then the arts would actually get the headline and a color photo on the front page. That always just really impressed me. Um, over the years, the, as the arts developed, now the Sun Gazette on Thursdays has a pullout section called Showcase that is all about the arts. Uh, next thing we did was, uh, we felt that the, um, the visual arts really didn't have a, a, a great platform in Williamsport because it's harder. Um, the performing arts are a little more organized than the visual artists. You know, they're like people working together and we're one lone artist in a studio. So what we did was we started a public art program. Our first grant was $300. <laughs> and we got that piece of art across from Otto's because the artists were incredibly generous. I mean, part of us, what happening in the downtown had to do with the generosity of the artists and how they gave and performed and were part of it all. Uh, our public art program, we gave artists little grants and they made pieces of art that we could put all over the downtown. And part of our public art program, we invited an artist named Michael Pilato from State College to come to Williamsport. Well, Michael came to Williamsport and he stayed and he painted that mural down on 4th Street, which is supposedly one of the biggest murals in the world. And in that mural, Michael brought together art, history, and community. Um, we had invited Williamsport and the artists to come downtown. It opened a floodgate for the artists, I mean, for the arts, and Williamsport was feeling more like a community. Uh, developers from New York happened to notice our vibrant art scene, and so they bought this enormous factory uh, to put in artist studios. So once the factory opened, we now had more art, younger art, um, hipper art, and more professional art. Through the, arts in downtown, uh, through the arts in Williamsport, we have been creating community and connection, and it has brought us to a point where today, having a TED Talk is like one of the results of this. Um, and especially a TED Talk that is about the 21st century. Because the next part of my talk is what I think means 
what, it, what, um, how what happened here, I think, has meaning for the 21st century. I think that through the regionalization of the arts, which is what we are doing, we are creating more sustainable communities for the 21st century. Regionalization of the arts is a national trend. Instead of consuming, watching TV or shopping, we're creating. We make paintings, we make dance, we make theater, and we share it with each other and we share it with the community. I think that through the, art, the regionalization of the arts, we are creating new lifestyle patterns and new forms of community that are gonna help us face the 21st century challenges of technology, globalization, and sustainability. When I first was on the Main Street Committee, my friends, I think these people were my friends, who knows, they used to make fun of me. They would go, oh, Judy, you're trying to save the world, I mean, the, the city. And I said, yes, I am trying to save the city. Um, but during the course of doing our work, as I was looking at the 100 best little art towns all across America for models for what we could do, I started to realize there were thousands of little art towns all across America. This was happening everywhere. That was when I realized that what we were really trying to do was to save the world. I think by going back to our little downtowns and trying to, we, that through art and history, we are trying to reclaim the story when we as a people built a nation. We were a people who crossed oceans, crossed plains, and through community, we were a people that built farms and churches and towns and states, and eventually we built a nation. I once saw a piece of art that was a replica of the Conestaga wagon. A Conestaga wagon is the one of the wagons that when we were pioneers, we used to cross the plains. Now, if anybody has ever driven cross country, you know how endless our plains are. The Conestaga wagon is about 10 feet big. The artist had taken the bottom of the wagon and tooled it with the names of the states because it's made out of wood. And then the artist had taken the cover of the wagon and sewn together uh, flags of the states to make the, uh, the, the cover of the wagon. And the artist said this thing. They said, I made this replica of this wagon because I want a people who cross the plains in this little thing to remember that they are a people that can do anything. As we walk into the, the 21st century, uh, the, the, the transition from the industrial age to the information age has disrupted all of our lives. And I think it's created a, a crisis of confidence in us as an Americans and the whole world. America, for better or worse, we're a world leader. We are a major democracy, and the world looks to us as to, the, to be the can-do people. And when America is afraid of the future, this really affects the whole world. Community, working together from the ground up, is one of the ways that we have built this country, and it is one of our core strengths. And now we enter the 21st century having lost a lot of our traditional modes of community. This is, this is a big one I'm gonna say here, guys. Um, I think that through the arts, we are creating new modes of community, that, new ways of learning to work together, to talk together, and that is part of how we built this country. I, I, we are here today because of community. We are here working together because of community, and I think through community, not only can we save the city, I think we can save the world. Thank you. <laughs>